Did it? Oh, yes, it did. Hi. How's everybody doing? Welcome into my kitchen. My name is Mary DeAngelis and this is In My Kitchen Where's Mary. Now on Saturday at noon, Eastern time of course, you can either find me cooking here in my kitchen at home or on QVC2. Now QVC2 has a few different channels. The channel that everybody grew up with is QVC. The channel that was added a few years back is called QVC2. You'll see mostly pre-recorded programming on that channel, but every once in a while, we are broadcasting live again on QVC2. So today, it's not live, but we are live from my kitchen. So I like to call this, in my kitchen, ta-da, where's Mary? Right there. So welcome in everybody, just wanna say hello. Hi Carrie, hi Dolan. Hi Lisa, hi Rachel, happy Saturday to you too. Hi Maura, hi Gina, hi Audrey, hi June, hi Kathy, Mary Ann, Lydia, Mary Ellen, Lorraine, Beth, Tracy, Sandy, so good to see all of you. Welcome to the 200 folks that are watching. Let's start by turning the oven on, getting that cast iron good and sizzly, and talking to you about what we're doing today. So today, I'm going to make a lightened up version of beef stroganoff. Now, classic beef stroganoff is so good. Usually served over egg noodles, uh, rich, just great beef flavor. Uh, today, we're gonna maintain the beef. I got a 90-10 beef. Uh, we're gonna use butter. I'm using um, less butter than the classic recipe that I could find but we're going to be adding a little onion, adding a little more garlic, um, a lightened up sour cream, a lightened up cream cheese. I took the heavy cream out of it completely. So let's see what happens. Still has, let me show, butter. So we're gonna put in a little at the start and then add in a little bit more later. I've got the garlic already minced and ready to go. Oh gosh, I mean, Come on, that smells so good. Just put a little dab of that behind each ear. Then I've got a pound of 90-10 beef, okay? So got the onion all chopped up and ready to go. I put, so this is the container for the cream cheese. I had four ounces of cream cheese left. I know it was meant to be. So I just put the sour cream in there with it so I wouldn't have to dirty up a dish. Huh? Smart. So that's ready to go. Then in here, I've got two tablespoons of Dijon, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, and I have a, I think it's a half, yeah, half of a tablespoon of paprika. I found this beautiful smoked paprika in Amish country. Uh, and I, oh, I just had to have it. So we're gonna put some of that in there. I have a tablespoon of all-purpose gluten-free flour. That's what we're gonna use to thicken it up just a little bit. Salt, salts und pfeffer, of course, to season it up, salt and pepper. And I've got the beef broth ready to go. Here's another little twist. Let me put in the butter, the first bit of butter to get us started. The first little twist, or not the first, another little twist is, bear with me, because remember, we're lightening it up. We're, we're messing with a classic, which is always says, dicey waters, but we're gonna put it over cauliflower rice. What? I know, let's see how it goes. Let's not poo-poo it from the start. Let's see, <laughs> listen to me, I'm talking to myself. Um, so let's see how it goes. And traditionally, like I said, egg noodles, but we're gonna try it over a little cauliflower rice. Come on, let's see what happens. This updo, by the way, tight. Yeah, I don't know that I'll be blinking the rest of the afternoon. Anyway, cauliflower rice ready to go. That step is done. Oh, and the mushrooms. The mushrooms are draining in the strainer. They're ready. So, ta-ta-ta-ta. Let's get this going. And let's start with, 
the tablespoon of butter is melting over here. Let me turn this a little this way so that you can see the stove a little bit better. How's this? Tra-la, that's better. All right, do we have, ooh, hello, that's melting. So, butter is in. I have one tablespoon of butter in there. Now I'm going to add the onion and we're gonna saute until they get a little translucent. You know, see through them. Splat them on in there, doesn't have to be fancy. You know how this kitchen rolls, we make a mess. Sometimes the fire extinguisher shows up. You know, happens. Boy, I've got a lot to talk to y'all about today. I have announcements. So excited. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Are y'all having a good Saturday? What's going on in your worlds? Y'all holding up okay? Everybody all right? Hang in there, friends. 2021 smells different, doesn't it? it smells a little bit different. It smells like things are getting a little better. Oh, I said it out loud. I don't want to jinx it. But smells like things are getting a little bit better. While those cook, let me tell you what's coming next. Onion, saute, then half the garlic. And we're going to stir that together. This is apparently the queen's wave. Also means stir that together. Who knew? Just figured that out. Hmm. Anyway. All right. Let's keep stirring. Woo. Oh, onion and butter, y'all. So good. Uh, should we talk about the first thing on our list that we have to talk about? Yeah, let's do it. There's so many things. On Tuesday, this Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. What number day is that? Hold on. This Tuesday is February 2nd. February, February, whatever. This Tuesday, <laughs> um, I, along with Alberti Popage and Jane Brown, we will be teaching cooking classes on the Food Network app. Did I, was that in my pocket? Is it, that little nugget of information? Did I just tuck that out of, okay. So this Tuesday, I'll be teaching a class via the Food Network app. What? I'm super excited and honored to join their team but also to uh, be alongside Alberti and Jane. Now they're teaching their own classes. Uh, we are all going to be on different days. Here's how you find out what's going on. I'll be posting it on my social media, of course. But if you go to, uh, I just went to Google and typed um, Food Network classes. And then if you go to the Food Network's uh, page, it'll have a list of the classes that you can take for free. It's really cool. Uh, but I have two. So one is coming up this Tuesday. The next is coming up. The first one, this Tuesday, we're going to be making my recommendations for a game day charcuterie board. Uh, and I make it super, super easy. Um, but Chef Jason from our team at QVC is going to be joining me. Um, and he is the Duke of charcuterie, seriously. His charcuterie boards, check him out on Instagram. He's Chef J Dish, um, amazing. But he's gonna be joining me because I'm the novice, he's the expert, and he'll be infusing a little bit of class into the whole event. But um, super excited that we get to do that. So this Tuesday, cooking class, look at that. It's a no look cook. All right, let's add in the garlic before this gets any worse. <laughs> uh, oh, snort for y'all. Hey. All right, garlic is in. We're putting in half, half the garlic at this point. Just half. We're gonna add in the rest later. Give this a little stir. 
Get that garlic. In. Oh, food perfume, everybody. Food perfume. So good. All right, now, a little onion, a little garlic. Now, I wrote this down earlier. Saute for two minutes. Then we're going to add the ground beef. Uh, for the beef, you could use ground beef. 80-20 is always um, the recommendation. I'm using 90-10. I'm trying to cut a little of the fat out of this one. Um, but you could also use bison. I think bison would be beautiful in there too. Uh, but yeah, if you're just joining us, my first announcement today is that next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be teaching a cooking class on the Food Network app. So you can download the Food Network app. You can follow along Food Network social media. Uh, you can also follow on Instagram, Food Network Kitchen. Um, but free classes via the app. So if you would like to join me on Tuesday also, you can find all the information. I'll, I'll post the link. Um, but you can find all the information by Googling um, Food Network Classes, and it'll take you to the page on their website where you can scroll and get reminded about any of their classes that are coming up. It's really cool. But I'm going to be teaching next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Alberti Popage is going to be teaching a class, and Jane Brown is going to be teaching a class. <laughs> I won't be cooking Groundhog. Yeah. I'll be making a charcuterie board, a game day charcuterie board. So I'm super excited about it. Super, super, super excited about it. Uh, and ugh, I just don't know how I'm gonna sleep before then. It's gonna be crazy. And I'm gonna try to stay calm. Y'all know me, when I get whipped up, it gets real loud. And I don't know if Food Network audience is ready for that. Well, yes, they are. They. I mean, they have loud people. Yes, they are. Okay, let's get the beef in there. A pound of ground. So I'm putting that in right on top of our mixture. You know this smells heavenly. Now, you could use, if you are meatless, you could, <laughs> I'm not even in frame. I'm like, hey, do you see what I'm doing? No, we don't. If you are, uh, ooh, I got sour cream everywhere. Hold on. If you would like to use crumbles, uh, maybe Beyond Meat or Impossible Burger Grounds, you could absolutely do that. If you wanted to give that a try, I would love to know how it turned out. I have tried to lighten up stroganoff. I've tried to lighten up stroganoff in the past with turkey and, um, it, it, it just, ah, that wasn't the place for me to cut calories. Just wasn't the place. Um, hey, Scott. Scott Grimes is here, y'all. Jay Jewelry in the house. Uh, oh, I saw that ring, Scott, on your social, the gemstone. Oh, I fell in love. It looks like a power ring. It looks like you wear it and you can, like, shoot good vibes out of your fists. That's just me. Hi, Dawn. Oh, love you back. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. We're making a lighter beef stroganoff. I don't, I just had to like, we're, we're making a lighter beef stroganoff. I don't know why that kicked into the robot, but it felt right. Um, I'm choosing to make it in my little round Dutch oven because I like to fling it around. And I feel like in a skillet, I'm gonna make a mess. I have to scrub down the top of this stove once a week as it is. Save myself an extra day or something, you know? And I can look at y'all and stir and not throw the pan across the stove top. Bonus. All right, this is cooking up. You gotta brown the meat all the way through and just cook it until you don't see red anymore. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, add a little salt and pepper, little salt und pfeffer. Break out a little German for y'all today. Salt und pfeffer. You know, when I was a little girl, we 
took a trip to Austria because my family lived in Germany because my father was active duty military. And we lived in Germany for many years. Well, a number of years, almost eight years. And we took a trip to Austria. Austria! Austria! And we took a tour of the salt mines. It was the coolest thing. And we went down the slide. So the, you know a banister, like a banister that takes you up and down stairs? The, that's how you get, I don't know if that's still how you get. My knowledge is from back in the 80s. But they would go lower into the salt mines via a banister. Line up, sit down, and ride all the way down. So when you go for the tour, we got to put on a uniform and we got to ride that thing all the way down. Now, let me tell you something. In theory, as a little kid, it sounds like a blast. Then you get there and you're looking at it and you're like, um, that looks dangerous. Uh, but oh my gosh, it's not. And it, you go like lightning. And let me tell you something, full disclosure, your buns are warm when you reach the bottom. I wouldn't say too hot, but I think warm is fair. Yeah, but we had a blast. Everything, I mean, wall, ceiling, everything, salt. It was the coolest thing. I actually learned a lot about salt by taking that tour. So that's my salt story. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we're browning up, looking good. I'll give you, I'll pick this up in a second and carry it over so that you can see. But, welcome in everybody who's just joining. We are making a lightened up, little bit lightened up version of stroganoff. And I think if anybody who's watching right now is following a keto diet, I think this might be keto friendly. But please let me know. Um, I'm using, let me read it to you. <clears throat> butter, yellow onion, garlic, beef, uh, I'm using a 90-10, uh, da, 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 salt and pepper for seasoning, baby bella mushrooms, all-purpose gluten-free flour, you could use, it's a one-for-one, one. you could use regular flour for sure, uh, uh, beef stock, I'm using a bone broth, either way, uh, blah, 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 blah. cream cheese, sour cream, Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard. They do make gluten-free Worcestershires. Good to know. Uh, Dijon mustard, paprika. Oh, I'm so excited about the paprika. Green onion for garnish and cauliflower rice instead of egg noodles. If anybody's following a keto diet, let me know in the comments. If this is how you type, we might be related because that's how I type too. Uh, but let me know in the comments if it's keto friendly because I feel like it might be, but ugh, I'm not well versed in the world of keto. Gluten free? Come talk to me. Uh, I, I know some things, but keto, uh, I still have things to learn. Um, let's see. Let's see what's in the pot. Ooh, that looks good. Hold on, we still got a little browning to do. Doop -a -doop -doo -doo -doo. I'll bring it over so y'all can see. Don't worry, I'll bring it over. I also have to show you what I found on the counter. <laughs> Hold on. Do 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 do. Wee. All right. So a little more browning to do. To do. Look what I found in my kitchen. I did not buy these. This pocket is for? <laughs> Where does it start? There's a pocket, by the way, this apron is on qbc.com, but hold on. Remember how I've been asking y'all for months, what would this pocket be for? Apparently for two Jim Beam minis. I didn't buy these. interesting uh i saw somebody said would need to laura lee thank you said would need to replace flour with alternative otherwise keto friendly and looks delicious so far oh yay okay so what could you 
could you do a, a maybe a different, uh, like a cauliflower flour? Because they do make cauliflower. What about, are beans keto friendly? I don't know, I'm sorry. But they make bean flours. I wonder, hmm. I think there's a way to just change up everything to make it suit what you need. Uh, and if you happen to change up things and it just so happens to be delicious too, boy, more power to you. Um, all right, so we have got this pretty much almost done. Let's get the onion down off the side. Get that incorporated. Tra-la, tra-la. All right. Got that. Now, next. Cook string. Transfer meat to a plate. Well, you know I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it in my favorite metal, my favorite metal bowl. That's, hold on. Yeah, that's right. That's better. That's better. All that, and now I have to wash the spoon. Mm, mm, mm. Goodness, just picture me as a child. I mean, it's not a far stretch, but woo, y'all, that's three full-time jobs. I am still browning. Meat to a plate. Hi, add the la 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 la. All right, so take all the juice from it and incorporate it into the bowl. Gloria says use oat flour. I've seen a lot of great suggestions for flour replacements if you're trying to keep it keto. Uh, Melissa says, I'm doing keto and use almond flour. Thank you, my friend. Excellent chiming in. Thank you all, you're so great. Um, Laura Lee, again, thank you, says almond or coconut flour. Now, because this is a savory, would you maybe trend more toward almond flour than coconut flour? Because to me, coconut flour has once it's all incorporated into your recipe, has a little bit of a sweetness to it. Um, and coconut for me is a sweet memory. Um, so I might trend, I might lean like this toward the almond flour. Just a thought, just a thought. These hands mean just a thought. All right, let's get all of this into the bowl. You ready? <laughs> Let's do this. See, that's why I don't wear my glasses when I cook. Because I would be all fogged up. All right, we got this part. We got this part. It's okay to leave that flavor in your pot or your skillet. Okay? That is okay. And if you use your spurtle, here, wait, let me go over here where y'all can see. If you use your spurtle, you can get out the remaining little pieces into the bowl, but leave that flavor in there. That's the good stuff. <laughs> RIP to my counter. <laughs> All right, let's get this back on the flame. All right, meat ready, off to the side. Done. Now, Add the remaining butter. We're gonna do the mushrooms next. Got it? So here's that part. Here is the butter. In total, this recipe uses three tablespoons of butter. In my opinion, you're going to get between six and eight servings uh, for this recipe. So, if you say, you know, ooh, three tablespoons of butter, if you spread that across the six to eight servings, then it's not so bad. But I know when I look at a recipe too, I have that moment where I'm like, oof, that's a lot, that's a lot. But then I remember how good butter tastes and I work my way through it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, butter's melting. 
and let's toss in the mushrooms. Do you know the mushroom man? Let's take a look. Oh, baby Bellas. There's a song in there somewhere, don't you think? Let's get those in. Those are all washed up and sliced. Mr. D's gonna eat good, y'all. He's at work today. He's gonna love this. And again, since we're a few minutes into it, we just, we just browned up the beef and the onion and the mushrooms. I've got cauliflower rice ready for it to be served over the top. And we are making a lightened up, maybe a smarter, maybe a healthier, whatever you wanna call it, version of uh, beef stroganoff. So, oh, I love beef stroganoff. Traditional beef stroganoff over egg noodles is just so good. Uh, but we are really focused on trying to make everyday better decisions for ourselves in our household. So I'm trying to come up with lightened up versions of classic recipes that we love. Um, so that's why we're making that recipe today. Right now, we are browning up the, wait a minute. We are browning up the mushrooms over there and they are turning into a lovely brownish hue. And I'll show you those in just a minute. Now, let me answer your question. This sweater, this is part of our unboxing segment. So remember, whenever I make a recipe in my kitchen, when it's cooking, we do some unboxings. When something is baking, we do some unboxings. But because this one is pretty steady until it's time to serve, I thought I'd weave it in, <laughs> hands, um, throughout the recipe. So, wanted to talk to you about this top. I just picked it up. It's from Denim & Company. I can prove it. Denim & Company. And it's so soft and fuzzy on the outside. So it's like sweatshirt material on the inside and soft and fuzzy, you know, a micro fleecy on the outside. I know, and this purple color is my jam. Now, a three, I wrote it down. Why is the timer going? I wrote it down, a 392-142. I'm gonna type it in the comments. A three nine two of course I forgot the last three one four two one four two I'm gonna say my top and a thumbs up emoji because I love that one okay so I love it it's it's a tunicky length too so you can wear it with jeans you can wear it with leggings if you wanted to so it's not like right below the waist it's not at the hip it's it's a little bit longer, so it's not like past your fingertips tunic length. To me, it's the perfect tunic length. It's not too long, so it makes you feel like you're wearing somebody else's clothes. It's awesome. I got it in a couple of colors. Love, wanted to share that with you. Wait a minute, let me see where we are in the mushrooms. Ooh, they look so pretty. Hold on, let me show you. I'll bring these over so y'all can see. I love mushrooms. I know it's, it can be, it's a polarizing food, uh, but check this out. La, 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 mushrooms. Okay. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right. I am so excited about tomorrow's in the kitchen with David. I planned a special outfit. Oh my God, hold on. Okay, this is our next unboxing. I just scared the cat. Did you know that we have nine West shoes on QVC.com? Y'all. Oh, 
I cannot. This is. Are those little teeny tiny sequins and glitter bits on these shoes? Yup. Look at that. Oh, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know. Who do you think you are? Well, tomorrow I think I'm fancy. I'm wearing sparkly boots. I'm wearing sparkly boots on In the Kitchen with David tomorrow, y'all. I wonder why. Hmm. Why? It's a great question. Have to tune in and find out. Let me give you the item number. <laughs> okay, wait. A five three four five three four five oh one five oh one. Sparkly boots. Sparkly boots. So cute. Yeah, okay. There, that was our second unboxing. Hold on, gotta wash my paws. At the paw wash. Da 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 da. Paw wash, yeah. Da 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 da. Right, Got these. So, those are the boots that I will be wearing tomorrow. Pretty excited, okay. So, have to tune in at noon. La, 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 la. All right, mushrooms. I should go in about seven minutes, season with salt and pepper and other half of the garlic. Let's do this. Half of the garlic going in. Do 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 do. Paw wash, yeah. Da 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 da. That. Salt. Salt and pepper. This. I like pepper. Okay. A little bit of salt. All right, mushrooms are in and they are ready for the next step. So what do we got? Uh, dust with a little flour. Cook until fragrant. The whole thing is fragrant, it smells so good. Uh, Naomi, I am making a lightened up version of the classic beef stroganoff. Yes. All right, so let's do, remember when you're incorporating flour to, let me talk to you this way. When you're incorporating flour to thicken up a recipe, a lot of you probably already know this, but you wanna do a little at a time so that it has the opportunity to incorporate it properly. Your flour, especially if you're using an alternative flour like almond, I'm using Bob's Red Mill all-purpose flour. It's very fine, so you wanna give it a minute to be able to incorporate into the liquid in the pan. So I just put a little bit in, that's all incorporated. I'm gonna put in a little more, give that a chance to meet and make new friends. They're having a meet and greet in there right now. I don't need to be over their shoulder, but I do need to keep it mixed up. Cause you know how wallflowers do, they'll go over there and pace themselves against the side and not make friends with anybody. That's my job. Ooh, lovely. Just lovely. All right, let me show you what it looks like so you can have that for a point of reference. Here is 
tasty mushrooms. Yum. Okay, got that. Da, 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 da. Palm wash, yeah. All right. Da, 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 da. Soft pepper flour, cook until fragrant. It is. Now we're gonna add one cup of beef bone broth. We're gonna add all the rest of it. So let's incorporate that first. So, the, the reason I'm incorporating that first before adding the rest of the ingredients is I'm using cast iron and the mushrooms and all of that liquid now that the flour has been added in, it will turn into a paste in the bottom of your cast iron if you don't keep it moving. So by incorporating the flour and the beef broth together, I'm keeping it from sticking in the bottom of the pan. Uh, and also, you know how those wallflowers are, they'll stick to the side. So let's get them all playing together. Now we got them. So let's add in, I'm adding in four ounces of cream cheese and half a cup of sour cream. I put it all into this container so I wouldn't have to clean an extra dish. I'm using this as a ramekin. Let's get that in there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's play nicely together. No need for fussing. Looks hysterical. Wait, let me show you guys. This is awesome. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Blap. <laughs> All right. There's that. Then we have uh, da -da -da -da, two teaspoons of Worcestershire, two teaspoons of Dijon, and a tablespoon of paprika, uh, and that's gonna do it. So let's get that in there. I say if you wanna add a little extra of those, go for it, because gosh, it's just good flavor. Now, gonna get that all incorporated together does anybody love the movie Princess Bride? Love brings us together. Love his accent. Always made me happy when I was little. Love that movie. All right, so we're going to let that, we're gonna bring the heat up a little bit, and we're going to let that get a good bubble going, and then we'll keep incorporating that together. I have another announcement. Told you we were going to have announcements. We were going to have unboxings. <sighs> oh, Steve, you love the Princess Bride. Inconceivable. Um, announcement is next Saturday and the Saturday after, we will be live in the Kitchen with Mary on QVC2. So we are going to have a couple more live episodes of In the Kitchen with Mary uh, on QVC2. What? I know. So it will be a two hour show, QVC2, starting next Saturday in the Kitchen with Mary, and it'll be noon Eastern time live. So if you think that sounds like a good idea, tap some hearts. We'll make sure to pass that message on to our broadcast team. Um, but we are going to be trying some different formats. So lots of really cool stuff. And here's why. I love our creative team. And I love, I love when you can flex creativity in broadcasting. And so we're going to be doing some of that. So Mary, thank you. It's In the Kitchen with Mary's when you're there. Uh, but next Saturday, 
noon Eastern time, QVC2, live in the kitchen with Mary. So I won't be in my home kitchen, but I will be live in the studio, but it's going to look a little different. So I'll explain more throughout the week, but in the kitchen with Mary, me as your host in the studio for QVC2. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I cannot wait. I love having the live shows with you in the studio. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And here's what I want to know. If you have ideas, if you have, even if, even if it's something that QVC does that you wish we didn't do, it doesn't have to be I like proactive ideas. It can also be, I wish you guys didn't do this. Share it, share it, share it, share it. Because we're evolving and we're growing and we're trying new things and we are taking you with us. And so the things that work, we keep. The things that don't, we ditch. But the, the thing that has made QVC such a huge success is you. And so we take your feedback very seriously. So feel free to let me know. I wanna see you do this. I wanna see you guys not do this. Feel free to share it. And I'll be in the studio live. I'm so excited. And tomorrow I'm wearing silver boots. Woo! Um, just to answer you, so QVC2 started a few years back. It's not that old, it's like maybe four years old. When the channel started, we were live all the time. Then we started playing uh, pre-recorded programming on QVC2. Now we are dabbling, dabbling into some live broadcasts and some pre-recorded broadcasts. We're going to be mixing it up. So Saturday, next Saturday, this time next weekend, I'll be live on QVC2 with all of you for In the Kitchen with Mary. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's because of you all. Uh, all right. Let's give this a stir. Stir, stir, stir. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's check our recipe. That was two announcements. Two announcements. What was the first one? I'm teaching a class on the Food Network app and I'm back live, baby, on QVC2 next weekend at noon Eastern time. What? Okay. Uh, let's see. We added in our sauces, bring to a simmer, return beef to the skillet. You got it. All right. We're almost done, folks. We are almost done. Well, how, how, why? There we go. Heaven's sake. Do y'all notice that every single week I'm confused by my microwave? How does that happen? All right. So we've got that. Oh, hey now. Hey now. That's looking pretty good. Let me show you where we're at. Please ignore the bad grammar. Please always ignore the bad grammar. Yeesh. I know. Okay. We're going to let this simmer. We're going to let that thicken up a little bit. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. We're going to let that thicken up. I'm going to really bring it to a medium, medium high heat. Bubbly. Let me get that bubbly. What else do I know? I thought there were three announcements. Oh, I have a third one. Hmm. Let's see. All right, that's going to cook for about another five minutes. Definitely tune in to In the Kitchen with David tomorrow. We have a ripping amount of fun planned. Definitely join me next Saturday live on QVC2. 
at noon, because In the Kitchen with Mary is going to be broadcasting live on QVC2. Uh, third, I'll be teaching some classes through the Food Network app. I showed you the Denim & Company top. That was the first unboxing, and technically it was already unboxed because it's on my body. <laughs> Oof. The shoes, the boots, were the second unboxing. Was there another? We got some Girl Scout cookies this week for Mr. D. Uh, I think that was it. I think that was it. Okay, well, here's the deal. We're gonna put some of the cauliflower rice in a bowl and see how this turned out. So, a little of that, put a little of that in there. Now, this is just a little snickety size, so this is not a full serving. I just wanted to taste so I could give y'all a, a little hint at if it turned out well or not. You know I'll tell you. And you know what I'm going to use for this one? Because it's saucy and it's got the mushrooms, I'm going to use my... Um, Lennox Spork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lennox Spork. Ooh, if you want to find information on the Food Network class that I'll be teaching, Google, go to Google and type in Food Network Classes. It'll pop up in the search and you can click that link and it'll take you to the Food Network website and it'll give you all the dates and times. My first class will be this coming Tuesday, Groundhog Day. <laughs> They're just going to play the show over. I'm kidding. Um, and I'm not cooking Groundhog. My class, my first class will be Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. But you can sign up for uh, reminders if you would like to. So, yeah, I'm teaching a Food Network class. What? I know, I'm so excited. And, you know, I'll drop stuff and break stuff because it's me and it's live and that's what I do. Uh, all right, I'm going to chop up a little green onion to put on top. and rolling. Oh, heaven's sake. Oh, that looks good. Wow. Hold on. I'm going to take this off the heat and show y'all. Goodness. Let's get this little trivet over here and put this little blivet over this way. Here we go. Ta-ta. Ta-ta-ta-ta. Wait, let me lift. Well, Get the spurtle out of there first. <laughs> oh, that paprika. I can smell it. it. Smells so good. Do you know what you're cooking in the Food Network class? Yes, I do. I'm going to be making my first class. I'll be making a game day charcuterie board. So that'll be fun. That's off, off, off. You know how I like to make sure that it's all turned off? Here is, here's the goods. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Little green onion, what? Look at that, everybody. Okay. Yep, it's hot, don't care. After being a flight attendant for a few years, I feel like my fingertips and my, it's all burned. It's from those ovens in the back of the airplane. We never had mitts. Can I get an amen from anybody who used to work on an airplane? Those ovens were hotter than Vesuvius, but did you ever have an oven mitt on the back of that plane? No, ma'am, you did not. And so, Ooh, my fingertips are leather at this point. <laughs> what? 
Oh, mama. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, you know what? That is delicious. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. We did something today. We did something today. Look at that bite. Look at that bite. What? We did something today. Okay. This is a winner. That's a winner. It's not, it's not, I don't feel, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I gotta take my apron off. All of a sudden it's too tight and I can't think. Okay, hold on. Almost lost my pants. What is happening? Okay. I've like a mild sweat. Oh. Okay, here's here's what happened. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I feel like it's rich in flavor. I feel like it's hearty, but I don't feel like it's heavy. Oh. This is a new staple in our house. Look at me. I'm, I had a few bites and I'm, I'm like looking at it like, hey, you look really nice today. Mm. We should carpool. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, welcome, sunshine gal. So that's my cat. He is not crazy about being held, but... <laughs> He needed to see what was going on. Um, wow. I will post this. I'm going to edit the recipe. I'm going to take a picture and I will post it ASAP to my Facebook page, all my social media. Um, I hope you had fun today. Just to recap, we made a lightened up beef stroganoff. It's delicious. And I ate it with uh, cauliflower rice. Excellent call. Uh, but feel free to serve this over egg noodles. If that's your favorite, you can absolutely do so. Uh, tune into my Food Network cooking class. In con uh, QVC is partnering up with Food Network. I will be live on their app teaching a class on game day charcuterie board. And we'll be having a lot of fun there. I will be on air on Monday. I have an hour of mucklucks. I'll see you all tomorrow for In the Kitchen with David. And this week I think I'm joining... Sandra for Patio and Garden too. So, oh my gosh, lots going on. But... I will see you live on QVC2 next Saturday at noon Eastern time for a live two-hour edition of In the Kitchen with Mary. So lots going on. I will post lots of reminders on social media. Um, lots of love to all of you. I saw some of you are headed to the grocery store. Have a great rest of your day. Be safe out there and sending you all lots of love. Thanks for coming to play in my kitchen. Bye.